Okay. A month ago, I put up a poll on our feed asking if people were interested in some of the service that we were getting done. And clearly I missed getting that up before we went to Bill Thomas for our warranty work. I covered the work in our St. Louis video that was done at Bill Thomas for warranty. And now I'm doing a quick video on the other work that we're getting done. All right, so this is future Nick. And as you go through this video, what you're gonna find out is our appointment has come and gone. And rather than show you other people's trailers, uh, what kind of the upgrades we did, I decided to kind of overlay what we had done while we were with Ronnie at Airstream Nuts and Bolts. It is something we are doing partially out of, of want, partially out of need. I'm gonna go through the two easiest ones first. Number one, which is an absolute want, it has nothing to do with need, is this window right here is going to be replaced. It's currently semi-opaque, and I've seen a couple of people on Instagram that have replaced that with a clear window or a tinted window, similar to the tint on all the other windows, so that you can let some light in and be able to see out. So it'll get, we'll get a new window there and we'll get a shade behind it that matches all the shades inside the Airstream. Again, this is a total want. It's to get some, some light in on this side because other than, I guess that's a bedroom window over there, but other than these two little port windows, there's no other windows on this side. So we're doing that. It's a decision we debated quite a bit because it's absolutely a want, it is not a need. And ultimately we decided that we were gonna do it. That's it, I'm gonna stop there. The next is partial want, partial we think we need. We are replacing both of our skylights. So we have a skylight that's in our, our hallway near the bedroom and we have a skylight that's kind of right here inside. The one back here has a small crack on the exterior bubble that's letting water in between the two, the two pieces of plastic. So that's the, we think we need to do it part of it. Beyond that, we looked at the new skylights. They have like a higher R value than the skylights that are currently there. And they're a little bit better, uh, better made. The last thing on the one side that I'm gonna talk about is the lift kit we're putting on this. So we're putting the Dexter three inch lift on. This one, again, somewhere between want and need. We've been to three places now where we've come close to scraping our bumper. The first one, which is probably the one that set us off on this direction, was at Buffalo River National River. So the campground there had, an, had a dedicated entrance and a dedicated exit. And we had looked at the exit while we were staying there and thought to ourselves, the angle is going to be such that the, the truck's going to come over the top and we're actually going to scrape. And when we talked to a park ranger at the, the gate, they had told us that very recently someone had basically ripped a hole in their black tank coming over that hill. That one just kind of scared us and made us decide that we wanted to get the lift. We've had a couple of other occurrences since then. One of them was backing into a friend's driveway. The angle was just enough that we came kind of a, an inch or so from, from scraping. The rest of this is going to come down to our electrical system and solar. I want to talk about the need that we see in upgrading our electrical system, which really boils down to we need a backup. So we have been in multiple parks where there have been multiple or at least a single power outage that lasted any length of time but we've had at least one that lasted a few hours and that was in Florida in the heat of summer. Luckily, we were able to react to that. We got the dogs out. We took them out in the truck for a little bit, cool them off. The upgrade we are making is we are essentially tripling our battery storage. We're going from 200 amp hours to 540 amp hours. So getting pretty close to triple so that we can have more power when we are off, off the 50 amp or 30 amp service. We are upgrading our inverter uh, to a 3000 watt inverter. So with the batteries now, we are upgrading that 3000 watt inverter so that we can run at least one of our AC units as a backup if we happen to not be in the trailer when the power goes out. With that power outage, it was getting hot fast and the fan probably would have kept the air circulating. Within an hour, it would have been over 100 degrees inside the trailer. So we're gonna solve the problem that we can solve on that side, which is if the power goes out, we will have a backup. 
The other part of that is we have the micro air thermostat installed, which will give us notification if the power goes out. We'll get a notification that the power's gone out and then theoretically the new inverter will actually kick over as the backup and it'll start running off batteries. Another quick interlude, uh, not only does it switch over and start running off the batteries, but the air conditioner won't even turn off. There's such a quick switch over. So if the power does go out, not only will it switch over to the, the batteries, but it will switch over fast enough that the AC stays on. While we're on the subject of the AC units and being able to run at least one of them as a backup, we are putting a soft start on both of them. The reason we're putting a soft start on both and not just the one that we intend to leave on is that we ran into some folks in Oklahoma who were talking to us about it and they told us that on 30 amp service with the two soft starts, you'd be able to run both of them. And we're definitely interested in that. We wanna be able to run both of those even on 30 amp service because we've been places where 30 amp service is all you can get. I would say most of the time, one of the ACs does just fine cooling the, the place down. But this whole summer, because of, I would say our poor planning, we ended up in very hot locations and we needed to use both of them. We are also adding solar, uh, solar panels to the roof. So we currently have three solar panels on the roof. We are moving to eight. Uh, so we'll put eight solar panels on the roof and uh, that'll help to charge those batteries. Uh, we're also doing DC to DC charging so that we can charge on the truck while we're driving. The next thing that we're doing with the electrical system is we're putting an inline EMS system in. Right now we use the plug-in progressive EMS and that's worked really well for us but it does it's one extra step every time we're turning everything on the with the inline ems we'll be able to just plug in and that'll function within the airstream one that is an absolute want two that are somewhat between a want and a need and the last one we're going to call a need because of how we've been traveling also having the electrical system upgraded will be nice for harvest host and other boondocking that we do or dry camping that we do because we, we're not reliant on finding a harvest host that has electrical hookups and or paying for the hookup. That's everything we're doing. We're doing all this with Ronnie at Airstream Nuts and Bolts in Dadeville, Alabama. Look for the kind of updated video or the post video to this of all the upgrades and what they look like after the fact. My curiosity is what upgrades have you made to your trailer? Obviously at this point, if you've watched our channel, you know we've done the Aircrafter AirPods, which were a game changer as far as the AC goes. We did the no locks AC return vent uh, upgrade so that they're thumb screws instead of a Phillips head. And we've done a couple other things here and there just to make it life a little bit simpler for us. What upgrades have you done? What have you found necessary versus a desire? In our case, there's some downside to this. We are losing our only external storage, which is at the front of the trailer. We're losing the majority of that. We're gonna have to move stuff from that external storage into the bed of the truck because that won't be available to us anymore, or most of it won't be available to us anymore. So that's the downside to ours is we're losing space. Let us know what you're doing or what you've done, what has been important to you, what has not been important to you, what was the downside of doing the upgrades. Thanks for watching. Over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna get some use out of everything that we put on here, and we'll talk about that in those videos. We actually boondocked for the three days after leaving Airstream Nuts and Bolts, and we're able to test out the system. In fact, at one of those spots, we ran the AC off of the battery because we were out for an extended period of time. Thanks for watching and we hope you stick with us.